Welcome to the Hornets Hivecast, presented by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. Here's your host, Sam Farber. Let's welcome back to the Hornets Hivecast, Hornets General Manager, President of Basketball Operations, Mitch Kupchak. Mitch, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Last time we talked to you, it was right after the draft. You had made your selections. Three of those guys have been in camp with the team here this training camp. Nick Smith Jr., Amari Bailey, and of course, the number 2 overall pick, Brandon Miller. Having seen them in camp, working under your coaches, playing with the rest of the roster, how do you feel about your draft hall, maybe in comparison to right after draft night? Well, there's also the fourth guy we drafted, James Naji, you know, who's in Barcelona right now, and uh, we're keeping track of him pretty closely, and you know, we feel he's got a bright future also. Um, but, you know, we've got two bigs. So probably the best place for him right now is Barcelona. Um, Having said that, well, most of the attention's on Brandon, right? And understandably so, number two pick in the draft. And, um, you know, I think he's getting better and better each game. Uh, When we got him, he had mono, so he had lost a lot of weight. So he's put a lot of that weight back on, and he's gotten much stronger. Having said that, he's got to get a lot stronger still. Um. Very pleased with him on the court. Um, he just has a great feel for the game. You know, fits right in. Uh, maybe a little bit too unselfish at times, uh, but does a lot of everything. Rebounds the ball, brings the ball up the floor, makes a play, moves the ball. You know, he'll score. So uh, all good. And of course, you know, at varying you know different levels, right? On uh, Nick Smith and you know Amari Bailey. Um, you know, we don't expect, you know, big contributions from either one of them. Um, having said that, they've both been good in camp. Um, I think, you know, they would benefit, um, you know, whether it's with this roster and practicing, but more likely, you know, getting a lot of reps, you know, down in Greensboro. Um, I think that's the expectation. You know, because we've got players right now at those positions and, um, you know, they need to play. You know, they're young and they need to get on the court and they need to play and they need to get reps. Uh, But we're pleased with all four players. Of course, James is not here, but, you know, we like our draft, but you have to wait a couple more years, look back on it, and then you'll know. With Brandon specifically, having seen him in the preseason and the starters just don't miss a beat with him out there, coach says repeatedly everything he seems to do makes sense. Does it speak more to him that the team is performing so well around him than it would even say if the team hadn't been playing as well, that group specifically, but he was posting 20 points a game? Does it say more about what he brings to the table that everything makes sense and the team as a whole is performing well? Well, you know, performing well, we have to wait, you know, a couple Preseason's months. a different story, true. <laughs> and look back, right? Uh, with Brandon, you know, his load at um, Alabama was more um, offensive-oriented. I think they expected him to score more, look to the basket more. I think with us, he realizes that's not something that he has to do right away. Um, and you're seeing a different part of the way he plays. You, you, you didn't see it as much in Alabama because he really was aggressive offensively, but really, right here he really just fits in. You know, like I said, he'll rebound the ball, bring the ball up the court, you know, move the ball, make a play, pass and cut. You know, he doesn't force anything. Um, so I think a part of it has to do with the, just the, the natural progression going from college, you know, to the NBA. And quite frankly, the players here are better. You know, he's got to figure out where he fits in. Long term, most organizations that have a lot of success, it seems to be anchored around fairly highly drafted guys, lottery guys, top three guys. Boston's a good example. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, that's the core of that team. Both were homegrown talents taken in the top three. You've now drafted twice here in Charlotte in the top three. How confident are you that the foundation for hopefully – championship caliber teams in the future is now here with Brandon Miller and LaMelo Ball? Well, the NBA has made a a concerted effort to level the playing field. Um, And, um, you know, for teams like Charlotte, you you could argue that, you know, you got to do it through the draft, right? You're not going to get the opportunity to pursue free agency. 
So that that was our original, you know, approach. Of course, you know, the first year here we had a veteran team. My first year, <laughs> and then my second year, we kind of you know broke it down a little bit, and then COVID hit, and the next two years were kind of kind of crazy, right? Uh, and then we had what I thought was a breakthrough year two years ago. Okay, and then last year, right, Miles misses the whole year and Mello breaks his ankle. So it's been that kind of a, you know, run here. But being where we are right now with, you know, two high picks, um, just because you pick high doesn't mean that they're going to be cornerstones. Uh, Mello, clearly, I mean, we rewarded him during the offseason, so we must think he's pretty good, right? And uh, we just talked about Brandon. So very comfortable, you know, with those two guys and their growth. I think Mello, as he gets stronger, is going to continue to improve and get better. And uh, Brandon, first year, I think he's going to continue to get better, but he ha- he does have to get stronger. But that's not to say guys like I-, I hate to start mentioning players because I know I'm going to leave somebody out. But you know, guys like Mark Williams, we drafted him in the first round, right? Nick Richards, we drafted in the second round, and and they're going to start or be supporting players, you know. So, yeah, it's great to have two high picks, and you hope that you know the players you pick one through three pan out to be valuable players. It's not always the case, you know. Been around long enough to know that you know guys drafted in the top three. There have been many. There have been some drafted number one that are gone after three years, right? But, you know, I'd rather draft, you know, in the top three than draft in the bottom of the first round because typically you're going to get a better player. Hornets General Manager Mitch Kupchak, President of Basketball Operations, back with us again here on the Hornets Hivecast. Outside of the draft, it was a a relatively quiet offseason in terms of free agency. You did address the guard position, Kelly Oubre Jr., Dennis Smith Jr. They both have moved on. You've brought in some new faces, but otherwise a fairly quiet offseason. Was that by design? Is that part of the the master plan as you continue to build this roster? Well, we were really active during the trade deadline. You know, we made two trades that we thought, you know, would make our offseason, you know, uh, more manageable, right? And, um, you know, going into the off season, you mentioned we drafted four players, three of which are on our roster right now. So up until you know a week or so ago, we were at fourteen, fourteen plus on our roster. So it's not like we had, you know, a lot of roster space to go out and to pursue free agents. You know, we did have financial ability, but you know, we had a good roster. We feel you know they're young, but they're not all young. Right, Gordon and uh, Terry, you know, uh, that get injured, um, but. I think we like the group we have. You know, we won 43 games two years ago. I think we're a better team now than we were two years ago. Now, I don't know about the rest of the Eastern Conference. <laughs> okay, so so I'd like to think that we'll be in the hunt for something. But I think we're a better team, at least on paper. You mentioned a couple of times the team two years ago, and I think you're, you're right to do so because if this was part of a, a five-year plan from when you were hired – Grading you on last year and the team on last year would be pretty unfair. It was basically submarine by injuries and absences. We didn't get a good opportunity to see right. just how it all came together. But now, entering year six, how would you grade yourself, the organization as a whole, putting in place whatever five-year plan you might have had as you took over here with the Hornets? Well, year year one, we had a veteran team. Okay, and it took us a couple of years to dig out from underneath some of the contracts. Um, And then our scouts just did a spectacular job in the draft, particularly in the second round. And we were able to, you know, get players that, you know, we were able to, you know, turn into roster players um, and then even assets that you could trade. And we did trade, you know, for a pick or two. So um, I thought we would have been 
a better team last year than we were two years ago. I don't see why we wouldn't have been, but we talked about it, the, the derailment and injuries. And and that's not an excuse. I mean, that's a part of this league. you got to stay healthy, right? And you got to keep your nose clean. Um, if we were a deeper team, right, then maybe we could have had a better a better year last year. You know, who knows, right? But yeah, yeah, we had we had some issues last year, and um, but that's behind us. The silver lining is that we got the number two pick in the draft, right? Which, of course, going into the draft, excuse me, going into the season, you know, maybe we're thinking we're going to get a late first round pick in the late teens, and we ended up getting the number two pick. Um, so. I think we're in a good spot. I, I like our scouts. Um, they do a great job with the draft. Larry Jordan heads up, you know, the scouting department. And um, Buzz and myself kind of oversee, you know, the total picture. You know, I'm not sure I can give myself a grade. Um, I could give our scouts a very high grade. And, you know, myself and I guess – in a lot of ways, you know, I get graded on how we do as a team, really. So to grade myself right now, if we have a losing season, then what does that do, right? Um, if we win a lot of games this year and we can eke into the playoffs and make some noise or whatever, then I don't have to grade myself, right? The grade's already there. So playoffs is, is the expectation. That, that is the level that signifies – the plan has worked, or is there something beyond? I mean, we, we've talked in the past, you don't yeah. just want to take part. You want to start to take over, to, to steal a catchphrase. So, But for, for this year, success is make the playoffs. That's proof that everything that has been put in place over the last five years has, has gone in the right direction. Yeah, we've been trying to build something that's, you know, the word, right, sustainable. And what does that mean? Well, that means let's you know get better and better every year. Um, don't mortgage the future, you know, don't try to make a deal just to get in the playoffs. And then once you get in the playoffs and maybe you lose, you look back on it and you say, well, you know, we gave up an asset or two and well, we got a bad contract now and we're still not much better than we really were. So you, you don't want to do that. Right. Uh, so we really had to be careful during the off season not to do that. Um, this group has a good mix of youth and, you know, veteran talent. And, yeah, I think the playoffs is a realistic, you know, goal for us. You know, we've gone through, you know, why not? Two years ago we won, right, 43 games. And so why, with I think, is a better team, why shouldn't we be a better team this year? And if you can win 43 to 45 or 46, whatever it may be, then you should be in the playoff hunt. And I think that's realistic. Um, and then I think we'll be better a year from now. So um, as far as keeping to, you know, the plan, you know, I do feel that we've built something that's got talent. You know, we've got some talent in Europe that we're, you know, growing a little bit, stocking, you know, somebody in the cupboards, right? So we've got a lot in play. Um, and even our young players this year that may end up in the G League, I think they could be helpful down the road too. So I think we're in a good spot. I'm not so much worried about getting a lot of picks right now and adding to this team via picks. It's always good to have picks because it helps you make a deal. But I'm not so much sure that, you know, if we had three first-round picks next year, would it be a good thing? Because we've got what I feel is, is good talent right now. And you can't be too young. You just can't keep on, you know, bringing in young players and building, right? You just at some point you got to produce. And I think we're in a position to produce. Hornets president of basketball operations and general manager Mitch Kupchak, our guest today here on the Hornets Hivecast as we get set to tip off a new season. There's a lot new going into it, both locally and league-wide. Let's talk about a league-wide thing new this year, the in-season tournament. Lots been talked about it. Uh, There's certainly a lot of fanfare and fervor around it. What are your thoughts on the in-season tournament and how it will impact the game? Well, I know there was a lot of... There's always been a lot of a discussion about those games that are being played in November and December. You know, uh, people are watching football, right? And people don't really watch. And maybe the players, they say, don't really care about those games. Now, you know, I did play 
And I will say, say that whenever you stepped on the court, you know, November or December and the lights came on, you know, we always played hard. And I, I always felt that we always gave it our very best. But, yeah, there's always been the perception that, hey, those games, you know, they, the, the players, you know, it's too early. There's like another 65 to go. And uh, so I think it's a great idea. It shows that leadership, you know, in New York is innovative. You know, they're trying to be creative. They, they're not afraid to try something different. You know, by by chance or necessity, they, they tried to play in a game that COVID year, right? And, you know, they weren't afraid to try it. And lo and behold, right, it turned out to be a good thing. And I like the play-in tournament right now. So I think it's a good thing. Let's give it a shot, right? I think the players play hard no matter what. But if this helps create some more excitement around our league in November and December, I think it's a great idea. More new stuff, specifically to the Hornets. New ownership in charge. Rick Schnall, Gabe Plotkin, they have stepped in as the majority partners running Hornet Sports and Entertainment. What have you seen? It's a short amount of time. It's not a lot of time to, to really put a whole mm-hmm. lot into place. But what have you already seen in terms of ways they are impacting the product on the floor as well as the product for the fans? Well, they, they haven't had the chance, you know, from the player personnel perspective yet. You know, the draft was was done back in June, right? And then there was, you know, the off season, you know, and they they were some they were involved, you know, in, in July, right? But, you know, their involvement in that part's gonna come this year as we approach the trade deadline, of course, during the off season with the draft and trades and so forth and so on. Um, they're passionate, uh, they're loaded with energy, uh, they're both basketball junkies, you know, um, Rick still plays, you know, he'll get out there here and he'll play five on five, which I don't think is a good idea. (laughs) I I know how that ends, you know, I've seen it end uh, several times. Uh, But, you know, when when you got that basketball Jones, right, you just can't, you can't shake it. And and they both got it. You know, they just like passionate, you know, and um, their energy and their passion, it's off the charts. When there's a change at that level, the conversation outside of the buildings, it it always seems to center around, oh, pressure's going to be up now on the front office, on the coaching staff. I always found that to be a little funny because this is professional sports. It's not as if there wasn't pressure before or won't be five years from now. But in terms of maybe their timeline or expectations, is there anything different being put in place in terms of what they want to see as opposed to the previous regime? They do want to win. I don't feel the one thing they haven't done is put pressure on us to win this year. Now, you know, that's great. But, you know, I feel where we are in in my five years here and the prog- the progression of this team right now, I think we are poised to win. So even though I don't think that they're putting pressure on us to win, and I think Coach Clifford feels the same way, right? Um, you know, I don't necessarily stay in this business because, you know, I'm concerned about my, my future, you know, my security, you know, um, I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm doing this because, um, well, when I came here, I came here to work for Michael and I wanted to build something. And this is a great opportunity for me, you know, to get away from a place where I was for many, many years and to come here and, you know, build something, you know, uh, with Buzz's help and with Larry's help. So um, I'm excited about it. And, um, you know, Rick and Gabe are on board. Uh, I don't feel pressure, but I do feel that this team is positioned to win, right? And I do want to win. That's what I want to do after the years that I've been here. And I thought we were there two years ago, got set back last year. So, yeah. I think we're in a position to win this year. I put that kind of pressure on myself. And, you know, when I talk to the players, I tell them this is a playoff year. Okay, we've got the talent. And I think they agree. I know they agree. You, in addition to recognizing what went wrong last year with injuries and absences, took a lot of ownership for it. Said we, we weren't deep enough to absorb it. I don't know that any team is deep enough to absorb all that took place. But you wanted to make an emphasis on that. With what you've done in the offseason, the draft, the additions you did make, how do you feel you're prepared now to, if 
God forbid someone misses a stretch of games to absorb those losses. Yeah, we're a much deeper team. Um, I, I expect Brandon Miller uh, to play significant minutes this year, and he can cover us in multiple spots, right? It's not just like he's going to be a wing, and when Gordon needs eight minutes of rest or ten minutes of rest, you know, Brandon's going to come in. You know, I think he can play in the backcourt, you know, depending upon, you know, the other team's defensive assignments. I think he can play beyond, you know, a wing position. Okay, so that that alone and, and getting healthy, you know, with um, Melo coming back. And then unexpectedly last year, Cody Martin, with an injury that we thought would be four to six weeks in November, you know, turned into something much more significant. Okay, and uh, we do expect him back at some point this season. So, you know, if those things come to fruition, then then we are going to be a deeper team. And uh, I don't see why, you know, that won't happen. You know, there's always an injury that's unexpected, or maybe someone doesn't get back as quick as you think. But just adding, just getting healthy and adding Brandon, who can play multiple positions, will make us a deeper team. My last one for you, I love your confidence. I share it. There, there's a lot of belief in the building that this is a playoff roster and this will be a playoff year. But outside publications, the GM survey, most of them are not projecting the Hornets to be in the postseason or not even mentioning them all in a variety of categories. Why are they wrong? Well, I mean, historically, you got to look at what we've done the last five years. Why, why would they put us in the playoffs? You know, we haven't done anything. Um, I thought maybe last year we would be in a position, but that didn't happen. You know, it got injured and, you know, off the court, whatever. Uh, So why would you put us in it? I mean, it's not something that, you know, it's a rite of passage. You know, you've got to earn that. And uh, we haven't earned it. And that's fine, though. You know, I hope, you know, it comes up in the locker room. I'm sure it will. You know, that players, you know, have a certain, you know, feel. No one feels we're any good, right? No one's picking us to do anything. I'm okay with that. You know, that's an underdog position and I get it. You know, we don't deserve to be put into the playoff picture right now. Now, if we get in this year and we get in the year after this year and then we don't get in it, that's a different story. Uh, But right now we don't deserve to be mentioned with those other teams. You know, it remains to be seen and, um, I hope our guys use it and our staff uses it as fuel for the fire. Mitch Kupchak, Hornets General Manager, President of Basketball Operations. Always enjoy our time getting to talk to you. Thanks so much for being so generous with yours and joining us here on the Hornets Hivecast. Thank you, sir. That does it for this edition of the Hornets Hivecast. Remember, the HHC is available daily wherever you get your podcasts all throughout the NBA season with game previews every game day, reviews every day after, and in-depth interviews everywhere in between. I'm Sam Farber. It's been a pleasure and a privilege having you along, and we'll talk to you next time right here on the Hornets Hivecast. Thank you for listening to the Hornets Hivecast, brought to you by Senta, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. For more coverage, visit Hornets.com.